Hello, Bar McCarthy here from Bold and Break, and we are going to be exploring a Sim 4D quick tip using Spline Dynamics. Here is what we will be making, and it's just a matter of clicking play, and you get this kind of very malleable animation going. And the cool thing about this is you have a lot of control. So if we were to add the step deformer to this, or even take away the step deformer and, uh, and turn on our taper, there's a lot you can do with this, which is quite cool. And before we get started, though, I want to direct you over to a YouTube channel called JB Motion. Myself and JB, we just did a quick tips video on Cinema 4D. He did five and I did five. A link to his channel will be in the description below. Definitely go check that out after this video, of course. Let's get started. Like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. First, we want to create a circle. And then we want to create a, another circle. So I'll duplicate this called this circle circle underscore thickness and put this on top rotate to just make sure that the z-axis is pointing up on the circle thickness uh, make sure your circle thickness is above circle press t to scale bring that right in and this will be the thickness of our circle within our cloner and make the circle thickness editable because you can only use spline dynamics with editable splines. Now we want to bring in our sweep and we put our both splines under our sweep. And now you have your circle. Very simple. Now we want to add a cloner. So have your sweep selected, hold alt and your sweep will go under your cloner. Now I'd experiment with the different shapes you can build here, but how I discovered this is I went to linear mode. I put in 20 counts of this circle, brought my white zero and let's change our Z position to 170. Cool. And I would even bring the thickness of our circle down a little bit more. And here we have our almost Looney Tune tunnel ready to animate. To get this moving, um, we want to right click on circle thickness, go down to our hair tag, add spline dynamics. Now let's see what happens when we add this. It just goes wild. We want to add some stiffness to this. Maybe bring your stiffness up to 60 in the property panel of spline dynamics. Go to your tag and untick collisions and tick rigid and that will just add some structure to this setup now the next thing we want to do just so we can add a deformer to the whole system is we want to add a null so select your clone hold alt and name your null to system or whatever you would prefer we want to get some control over this and to do that it will need some forces in place to hold this structure now there's lots of forces you can add but let's start with rotation select your spline dynamics tag go into your forces and drag in rotation that will add this interesting effect of it rotating the circle thickness here so this is rotating around and it's giving this kind of warpy effect which is quite cool so the really cool thing about this system that you've set up, it's very kind of malleable with Cinema 4D's uh, deformers. So if we add taper to this um, and put it under our null, let's uh, select the Z plus and fit to parent. And let's start playing with the strength of this taper. And you can really start to see where you get some very abstract and interesting results. So if we play this, at this weird warpy look and the actual geometry is deforming without needing to add much effort to this let's add some curvature here just start to really play with like even that is a cool effect in itself you know there you go there's a kind of a quick tip on how to use spline dynamics cloner and the deformers with some forces in very interesting ways I wouldn't just do this. I would definitely experiment with different forces, different deformers, you know, different values, different strengths, and really have a play with this because I'm I haven't finished playing with this and I'm gonna, you know, play around, see what I can make, 
Um, and it's very cool because you haven't added one keyframe to this. It's just you click play and you get some, you know, interesting results and uh, visual experiments. Please comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And please make sure you check out JB Motions. Um, we'll definitely be doing a collaboration at some point in the future. The next video to come out is, of course, Redshift Volumetric Lighting Part 2. Hopefully soon. Not going to give an absolute date on that because I'm not sure when it's going to be uploaded, but definitely soon. Thank you for watching and goodbye.